The film opens in World War II era China, where a covert Japanese lab conducts biochemical experiments underground, attempting to create invincible super soldiers through physical enhancement serums. However, the lab disappears without a trace after a devastating British raid, leaving its secret location buried in silence. Fast forward to 2010, where the focus shifts to Sonny, a circus clown leading his troupe in live performances. Sonny has an impressive skill with knife throwing, though he feels it's wasted since he's never given the spotlight. His mentor, affectionately called Uncle, is both his martial arts teacher and the circus owner who took Sonny in. Despite being only a circus clown, Sonny dreams big. He idolizes his late father, famously known as the King of the Flying Knife, and aspires to follow in his footsteps. Yet, Uncle holds him back, bound by a promise to Sonny's father to keep him safe and cared for at all costs. Meanwhile, Sonny accidentally spots five of his senior circus members, including Zhang, sneaking out one night. The group is secretly following three treasure hunters who are setting off explosives near ancient ruins. These ruins, remnants of a Japanese military base from World War II, are close to the circus grounds where Sonny works. As the four circus seniors realize there may be treasure hidden inside, they seize the opportunity to escape their struggling circus life. Zhang and his group ambush the treasure hunters, hoping that this windfall will mean they'll never have to perform in the circus again. Sonny, however, is accidentally spotted, and the group initially considers sending him away. But Zhang quickly comes up with a cruel plan to use Sonny as part of their exploration in the underground chamber. As expected, they stumble upon a hidden biochemical lab, long abandoned by the Japanese. In an eerie twist, Sonny is forced to open a jar they believe holds gold bars. <laughs> Once they deem it safe, Zhang orders one of the group to kill Sonny in a secluded spot. But instead of striking it rich, they unknowingly release a toxic gas from one of the other jars. This gas, created by Japanese scientists in World War II, was meant to mutate soldiers into superhuman warriors. Although the gas does grant them immense strength, it comes with a horrible price. Their faces and bodies are grotesquely transformed into monstrous forms, and controlling their newfound powers becomes nearly impossible. Instead of striking it rich, Zhang and his group find themselves suffering horribly. The biochemical gas they inhaled causes violent nausea and unbearable pain. Sonny, caught in the chaos, ends up falling onto a boat that unknowingly takes him back to Hong Kong. Exposed to the gas, Sonny undergoes a bizarre transformation, causing his body to swell. Overwhelmed by an intense hunger, he's forced to steal salted fish from a fisherman, only to be chased and accused of theft. Panicked, Sonny escapes into the city streets. During his desperate situation, Sonny has a chance encounter with a woman named Angel. She asks him for help changing a flat tire, and in return, she offers him a ride back to his place. <laughs> <laughs> Once he returns to the circus dormitory, Sonny collapses onto his bed, unaware that his body is now leaking water like a sponge. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zhang and his three friends are wreaking havoc, robbing people of their money and jewelry. It turns out the toxic gas has given them all, 
including Sunny, superhuman abilities, though their powers come at a shocking cost. The next morning, Sunny is surprised to find his body back to normal, with no signs of mutation. Eager to return to his old life, he tries to reach his uncle, who's still out of town, to resume their circus act. Soon, Sonny notices something odd, he sees a mosquito flying in ultra-slow motion. The biochemical gas has affected his heart rate, speeding it up to the point where the world around him seems to slow down, like a slow-motion scene in a movie. While Sonny is out looking for food, a bank robbery and hostage situation occurs. The police struggle to handle the situation as the robber tightly holds a female hostage, making it difficult for snipers to get a clear shot. Unexpectedly, Angel, who turns out to be a journalist, happens to be nearby. She doesn't recognize Sonny, who has returned to his normal form, as the same person she met before. As the tension escalates, the robber prepares to pull the trigger. However, with his enhanced vision, Sonny can see the movements clearly from hundreds of meters away. Reacting quickly, Sonny picks up a small bamboo stick and throws it with precision, hitting the robber's hand and causing him to drop his weapon, saving the hostage's life. Sonny becomes the center of attention, attracting the media's interest. Recognizing the need to protect him, Angel drives Sonny away to his home to gather more information about him. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zhang and his gang find that their mutations have not only granted them incredible strength and endurance but have also transformed their appearances into something monstrous. Desperate to return to normal, they take several scientists hostage, demanding an antidote. <laughs> When Zhang sees Sonny on TV, he's shocked that Sonny has retained his normal appearance without any visible mutations. The captured scientists explain that the toxin reacts differently in each person's body, and it's likely that Sonny has natural antibodies preventing physical changes. Zhang and his crew track down Sonny to the training center, where he and Angel are hiding from the press. Hello, Angel. Upon arrival, Zhang is stunned to see Sunny moving at speeds far beyond their own. A fierce battle breaks out between Sunny and Zhang's team, whose powers push human limits. Although Sonny's speed and strength give him an edge, he's overwhelmed by their sheer numbers. <laughs> Suddenly, two special agents, Leng Fang and Mei Ling, arrive to assist Sonny. They're part of a team investigating the mysterious incidents and working to prevent public panic. As Sonny fights off Zhang and his men, he improvises by wedging knives between his fingers, mimicking a move reminiscent of Wolverine. As a skilled knife thrower, Sonny engages Zhang in a showdown, showcasing his remarkable technique. After the dust settles, Zhang and his gang escape to an unknown location. Leng Fang and Mei Ling then take Sunny to a government facility for treatment. 
There, doctors discover that the toxin has indeed boosted Sonny's physical abilities and instincts, though oddly, it hasn't affected his muscles or organs. They conclude that Sonny's unique genetics make him immune to the disfiguring effects, making him one of a kind. Sensing a story in Sonny's rise, Angel, a perceptive journalist, suggests making him a hero to boost public trust in law enforcement. The police chief agrees, and Sonny is widely promoted as a symbol of justice. Almost overnight, Sonny becomes a media sensation in Hong Kong. Although his initial role was to inspire confidence in law enforcement, his fame takes a commercial turn, benefiting Angel and her company. Sonny becomes the face of countless ads, many unrelated to heroism, all to drive profit. This publicity concerns Lang Fang and Mei Ling, who worry that Sonny's constant exposure will provoke Zhang and his gang, driving them to more extreme actions. Their fears are soon realized, as Zhang and his crew undergo rapid, grotesque transformations, with their faces growing monstrous and claws emerging where fingers should be. One evening, Lang Fang and Mei Ling sit together, sharing a private conversation that reveals they are an engaged couple planning their wedding. However, Mei Ling harbors deep concerns about their mission to protect Sonny. She worries that their enemies are no longer ordinary humans but mutated monsters. With this in mind, she wants to request backup from headquarters to enhance their security. Leng Fang, however, driven by his ambition to prove himself, declines the offer for additional help. He insists on handling the mission with their own skills, determined to show they can complete it without relying on anyone else. <laughs> Amid the bustling film set, Zhang and his crew suddenly appear, stirring chaos. Desperate for a cure to their mutations, they believe Sonny's blood holds the key. But Zhang's ambitions don't stop there, he's also jealous of Sonny's popularity and has secretly fallen for Angel, who is unaware of his admiration. As Sonny and Zhang clash in a fierce showdown in the studio, a different scene unfolds nearby, where Leng Feng faces off with Yuli, a mutated woman with terrifying strength. Leng Feng's unique skills in acupuncture and nerve strikes allow him to paralyze Yuli, rendering her defenseless. Back in the studio, Sunny begins to falter, and Zhang seizes the moment to bite him, hoping for a cure. But Sunny's DNA is unique resistant to the biotoxins in his blood, making it ineffective against their mutations. Just when the situation seems bleak, Leng Feng arrives, determined to defeat Zhang. His fiancée, Mei Ling, begs him to leave with her, but consumed by ambition, he chooses to fight on, using his nerve-striking skills against Zhang. As Zhang reaches an even more dangerous third-stage mutation, Sunny and Mei Ling are gravely injured, forcing Lang Feng to retreat with them. <laughs> Tragically, Mei Ling's injuries are too severe, and she dies on the way. Her death, only two days before their wedding, devastates Lang Feng. Consumed with guilt, he realizes too late that his stubborn ambition led him to ignore Mei Ling's plea costing him everything. In a secluded cabin by the lake, Leng Feng carefully treats Sunny with acupuncture, helping him recover. With a fierce determination, Leng Feng decides to teach Sunny the art of harnessing and amplifying his powers, believing Sunny's unique strength is the only hope against Zhang, who is now transformed into a monstrous force. <laughs> Meanwhile, Zhang's brutality escalates, leaving destruction in his wake across the city. Despite his former wealth and fame, nothing can restore him to his past self. Isolated and physically monstrous, Zhang faces a bleak future, rejected by the very society he once thrived in. Meanwhile, the police devise a plan to capture Zhang by luring him to meet Angel. But their operation doesn't go as planned. 
When they arrive at the designated apartment, they're unaware of Zhang's mutant ally lurking nearby. In a flash, the mutant launches a brutal attack, wiping out the entire police force present. Inside the apartment, Zhang quickly overpowers two guards and reaches Angel. He offers her the chance to join him, promising they could rule the world together. Horrified, Angel decides she'd rather end it all and prepares to leap from the rooftop with him. Just then, Sunny, whom she believed was dead, appears in time to save her. In a tense moment, Angel is stunned to see Sunny alive. Suddenly, Zhang confronts them, attacking Sunny and capturing Angel before escaping. <laughs> Meanwhile, Leng Feng arrives to assist any remaining officers trapped by a green-faced mutant wreaking havoc in the building. Realizing his acupuncture techniques are useless against this mutant, Leng Feng makes a courageous choice. He initiates his backup plan, sacrificing himself in an explosion to take down the creature. In this act of self-sacrifice, he ensures that Mei Ling's death was not in vain. Sunny pursues Zhang relentlessly to rescue Angel, leading to an intense knife-throwing battle. Sunny briefly gains the upper hand and manages to reach Angel, but Zhang suddenly attacks, hurling Sunny back. As she watches Sunny struggle, Angel seizes the moment, jumping into a nearby truck and ramming it straight into Zhang. The attempt to end the fight is unsuccessful, however, as Zhang violently overturns the truck, trapping Angel inside. Seeing Angel defenseless, Sunny resumes the knife-throwing duel with Zhang. The chaos escalates as civilians are caught in the crossfire. In a final cruel twist, Zhang targets Sunny with a deadly throw. But, in a heartbreaking act of bravery, Angel throws herself in front of Sunny, taking the hit to protect him. Sunny's heart fills with grief and rage as he realizes Angel's sacrifice. <laughs> with no knives left, he spots a large shard of glass and throws it at Zhang just as Zhang aims another knife his way. Sunny then pulls the knife from his shoulder, launching it at Zhang, hitting his tailbone, his hidden weakness. As the fight ends, Sunny rushes to Angel, who miraculously survives. In a touching conclusion, they marry and have a child, with Sunny lovingly teaching their child the art of knife throwing, passing on his legacy. And with that, the film concludes. <laughs>